Hey, you downtimers. I really appreciate the compliments and comments about the budget gaming table. Uh, I recently added some lighting to it, and I figure you guys might want to see that too. So let's go to the table and check it out. Years ago, I got LED strip lights for the inside of our house and the theater, actually, to help light up some steps. And I found we really don't use them that much, although we have used them quite a bit throughout the years, like parties, you know, birthday parties and so forth. And uh, so I've been pretty familiar with them. I never actually took the backing off of them to adhere them to anything. So we really haven't been using them that much. So I started thinking, you know, it would be probably pretty neat to use these at our gaming table. So I decided to take them out of the house and put them in the shed studio where we have our game to our budget gaming table. And I'll put a link below in the description where you can get them on Amazon. RGB strip lights, 16 feet, and it's about 18 bucks. So for less than 20 bucks, you can get these lights set up on your table. And you'll notice I got some electrical wire. This was left over from when we constructed the shed studio. And it was quite a bit. So I have a lot of this just lying around and I decided to use this as the foundation of the LED lights. And you notice I'm, I'm wiping the rubber of the uh, electrical wire off before I'm putting the LED strip on it. Uh, it needs to be clean and dry and flat. So if you have a clean, dry, flat surface, it should adhere pretty well to it. Uh, I was kind of surprised the, the glue that's used on these LED lights is pretty, pretty decent. Uh, I will say this though, the technique I'm using here would work pretty well if the lights were going to be rather flat. When you bend them in a certain way, uh, of course rubber is very flexible, but the LED lights, while flexible for a thin metal, it wants to bend and it wants to give and, and it works rather well for going around curves and so forth. But not as well as rubber so keep that in mind and obviously it seems like that would be the case but you don't really think about it but i'm, I'm still glad i put this on uh, electrical wire with the rubber like this because and the main reason why i want to do this is to keep it versatile right so uh, if i want to now the budget gaming table I, if you guys have seen the, the first video i did on that one of my main things that i like about that is it's, it's versatile right so you can take the wood off and put different wood on you can take the fabric off and put different fabric on uh, you can change up the color scheme of the fabric that you're using and so forth and so on so that's a big attraction for me for, for our gaming table. So I wanted the LED lights to be just as versatile. A better technique would be to put the electrical wire on the table first and then put the LED strip on the electrical wire while you have the electrical wire in place. Because uh, you'll see here in a moment, when I start trying to bend the LED strips, it'll start giving in certain places. So I have to kind of, you know, you have to work with it a little bit if you do it the way I've done it here. Uh, but the reason why I did it that way is because I was thinking in terms of, well, I want to be able to take this off of the gaming table. I want to be able to use this maybe even over my crafting table in the shed studio, maybe even use it as extra lighting for the YouTube channel, right? Stuff like that. But what I found was <laughs> 16 feet of LED strip lighting is a lot to deal with. It's rather cumbersome and awkward uh, to move about. It's not quite as easy to deal with and maneuver as what I was thinking it might would be. So while I still might end up using this in various locations and so forth, it's really not worth me taking off the table and repositioning uh, elsewhere unless I'm going to use it for quite a bit, you know, maybe a few days or something. Then I definitely would, would consider doing it. Uh, other than that, if for just a couple hours or something, I'm not gonna do it because it might take about, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get the LED strip set up properly at the new location uh, over the crafting table or whatever. Now these light strips can be cut into smaller strips, which is super convenient, but I would rather not cut the strip just in case I'd like to use lights elsewhere. So uh, it's not real convenient to move it about, but I am glad I went with the electrical wiring support and foundation for the LED strip because it is nice knowing that I can take it off the table anytime I need to. If I want to change the, of course, now when I want to change the fabric out, it makes it a lot easier, you know, to, to maneuver the fabric out around that electrical wire just to take the wire off and take the, the fabric off and change the fabric out to a different fabric, different color and so forth and so on. 
I didn't want to stick the LED strip to the wood. So that worked out rather well. I was glad I did that. And so basically I did all that for versatility. And speaking of versatility, the lights come with a 44 key infrared remote with 19 colors to choose from and white. And there are lots of functions on the remote too, such as a fade, dimmer, flash, and more. And as I said, the remote control is infrared, so of course you have to have a line of sight with the sensor. And I just put the sensor under the table and it's worked out fine so far. If I ever had any, have any issues or anything with it, I'll probably just tape the sensor to the bottom of the table. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe somebody's legs getting in the way because it, it hangs down a little bit. But so far it's been fine. And here's the table all set up and ready to go with the lights plugged in and the overhead lights turned off. And just want to show you guys how quickly you can change between colors and how easy it is to, to work with a remote control. And here's a few close-ups to give you guys a few ideas as to how you can utilize the different colors for different scenes. I like the blue for the wintry scenes. And of course, you have the reds for the, the fiery scenes and, and the greens for the poisonous spider scenes. And, and then you also have the, the purple for I like purple for necromancers, I don't know why, but I think that's kind of a cool color for like the undead fights and the undead bosses and so forth. And green for the orcs, right, and goblins and, and all those. And I really like yellow for brass golems or brass statues or even bronze statues. That's about it, guys. If you would, please give us a like and uh, give us a comment. Let us know what you think about the light setup. Less than 20 bucks uh, for, for this versatility and this enhancement to your, your miniature gaming scenes. I think it's a pretty good deal. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And as usual, guys, thanks for watching.